Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here today at the Cody Firearms Museum, part of the Buffalo Bill Cody Center of the West, and I am taking a look at a very interesting prototype Winchester Select Fire magazine fed version of an M1 Garand. Now, this was obviously part of the development program or process for the M14 rifle. Where exactly it fits in that process, I really don't know. Um, there doesn't appear to mu be much documentation on this. Unfortunately, while there are good references out there on the Springfield and the Remington uh, corporate versions of the different rifles that uh, ended up as part of the M14 project, there doesn't seem to be very much reference material out there on the Winchester guns, and this is one of those. Um, the Cody Museum has the Winchester firearms collection, which includes a lot of prototypes, some which we have looked at, some which we'll look at in the future, and some like this one. So I can't really tell you the where and the when and the how this did in, under trials, but we will take a close look at it, and I can point out a whole bunch of very interesting things, uh, features of this particular prototype example. Now the first thing I want to mention is that this gun is really light. You look at this and you expect it to weigh something like 12 or 14 pounds, right? Because it's got a big old bipod on the front, presumably it's maybe a heavy barrel, it has a selector switch, which you can't see because it's on this side of the gun, uh, magazine fed. In reality, this thing is at least two pounds lighter than an M1. I bet this is between seven and eight pounds. I don't have a scale to weigh it on. But what's actually going on here, there's a lot cut away in the inside that you'll see. Uh, the bulk of this uh, flash hider bipod assembly is made of aluminum. The butt plate is made of aluminum. There might be some magnesium parts in there somewhere. A lot of stuff has been... The, they, they've cut every ounce possible out of this gun, and it's really an impressive gun to handle as a result. Now, um, let's just go ahead and uh, take a closer look at it. Let me take the stock off and show you some of the internals. All right, so the first, the most obvious difference is that a pistol grip has been added. Um, this didn't involve any actual modification to the trigger group. This is actually kind of like the, the Beretta BM-59 uh, Garand modifications where they've added a pistol grip to the stock. So pretty simple there, we'll take it apart in a moment. Uh, magazine has been added, they put a magazine catch at the front, which is not a, not a bad idea. This keeps it out of the way of all the trigger assembly stuff that's already in there. This is a custom proprietary uh, magazine, it's designed for 308. This is a 308 NATO gun, which suggests that it was definitely post-World War II. Now what's interesting here is that they have actually used an M1 receiver. So this is a Winchester M1, it's a 1.6 million uh, serial number gun, but you can see when I open it, there's a block here in the back of the receiver because it's a 30-06 length receiver with a 308 length magazine. So oh, that was an easy way to not have to redo a whole bunch of tooling uh, to make 308 caliber receivers for experimental guns. No, instead, we'll just use a 30 out 6 receiver. The extra space actually kind of helps. That allows the, the bolts going, it has a little bit farther that it can travel, and during that time, the magazine is, has more time to feed a cartridge up into position. The handguard here has been beefed up a bit. We'll take a look at that from the inside. But first, let's take a look at the bipod. Right, so the main body here is this big aluminum flash hider conical deal. The legs are spring-loaded, so I can pull the leg down, snap it into place up here, like that. This does, this rotates, but it has a limited uh, arc of rotation. Now, to take this off, all I have to do is flip this latch down, like that. Uh, this whole assembly is actually locked onto the bayonet lug, very much like uh, one of the World War II grenade launchers. So with that undone, this whole assembly comes off. There you can see the inside of the flash hider, really just a big cone. Locks onto the back. There's our locking tab. Pretty simple, really. There you go. Bipod assembly removes quickly and easily. Now, like I mentioned, this is, I think, hollow, uh, thin hollow tube steel and aluminum. This whole assembly is quite lightweight by itself. We'll start by taking out the magazine. Set that aside. Then, just like a regular M1, the trigger group 
the trigger guard opens up, the trigger assembly comes out because of the magazine conversion. This also now has the floor plate and the magazine catch. The mag catch is built right into this. Pretty simple, just a spring and a catch. That catch locks in this notch in the front of the magazine. Now we can pull the stock off just like a typical M1 again. You can see the opening, the, the heavier wood down here on the front handguard. Obviously it's been cut away a bit for the detachable magazine. That's about it. This is also a very light piece of wood. And I mentioned the aluminum butt plate checkered back here to stick to your shoulder a bit. Now inside here is where we've got a lot of interesting stuff going on. So first off, you'll notice the op rod is completely straight. It doesn't have a dog leg in it. That's one of the potential weak points on a standard M1. Uh, the op rod can bend at that, that dog leg and it was a somewhat complex manufacturing step to get the tooling set up to bend just the right uh, dog leg into those op rods. Well, they got rid of that on this Winchester prototype, so it runs straight backwards. The, the recoil spring here has been reprofiled a bit to match. Pull that out. Now this, now this is our selector lever and it moves this guy just a little bit up and down. It does that through this pin, which obviously has a cammed surface inside here. So that's going to uh, engage or disengage an auto sear in the fire control group. What I'm more interested in is there's very little stuff back here. The front arms that you would normally have on a standard clip fed M1 are gone. Uh, we've taken a look at another uh, magazine fed M1 that had a, a box added to it here uh, to support the magazine. That's not there. Pretty dramatic change. The bottom of the barrel has been milled flat. That gives room for this straight op rod and that cuts a significant amount of weight out of the gun. Uh, presumably they found that that didn't have a deleterious effect on the gun uh, being able to withstand firing. But, you know, obviously all of the, by using a box magazine they've been able to get rid of all of the, the mechanism in here uh, that Garin designed for the clip feeding and ejecting process. That's all gone. Uh, in fact, the cutout for the, uh, the clip release is also gone. There is no clip release on the gun. The upper handguard was widened to match the lower. Over here it's a very thin piece. You can see a little bit of it's cracked off. That's, that's probably too thin right there, but uh, it is a prototype rifle. So, The action, however, is still basic all M1 Garand. Well, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I wish I knew more about exactly the backstory to this rifle and how it actually performed. I don't, unfortunately, but uh, who knows, maybe with uh, some video out there someone will be able to find some of the records and even if they don't, it's a really interesting look at some of the things that could be done and were done to the M1 Garand in the attempt to make it into a light machine gun. So, Thanks for watching, I'd like to thank the Cody Museum, Cody Firearms Museum, for letting me take a look at this and of course tune in again to ForgottenWeapons.com. <laughs>